I'm Giselle Hinojosa, a graphic designer from Monterrey, Mexico. And uh, I'm very passionate about uh, gender equality issues. I love learning new stuff. And I also would like to find a job as a front end designer when I graduate, um, probably in an e-commerce e um, website. So for that reason, I'm presenting two of my uh, school work that has more relation with um, front end coding, um, like my Fillmore Florist um, redesign. This was made in two phases. First, the, re the redesign in uh, WNM 605, and then the dynamic website um, in WNM 608. Um, the City Lights app um, is a very interesting app. I, I really love working on it because I learned a lot of Java, uh, JavaScript and it is very dynamic and fun. So to start my presentation, I would like to present my um, concept video so you have a little bit more understanding of my thesis project. This is Max. He is an active and creative kid who loves sports and video games. At home, Max has learned that when his dad's not around, he becomes the man of the house. But his sisters don't like that very much. Recently, Max started reading The Powers, An Adventure of Possibilities. This ebook encourages him to make choices among various plot options, which reflect the modern thinking on gender neutral roles. Max rewrites and saves his own exciting new adventure with empowering lessons about gender equality and teamwork. With each choice he makes, Max receives power coins that allow him to unlock power and spell cards for the gameplay. With the powers and adventure of possibilities, Max has learned about the importance of gender equality within the family, and now he has more fun with his sisters. Download the ebook and let's start changing gender stereotypes one magical journey at a time. Choose your own adventures meets gender equality. The Powers and Adventure of Possibilities is an interactive ebook for children that um, encourage them to create exciting gender stereotype-free adventures. The reader will shape the course of the story by choosing among different plot options uh, during key parts of the story. Um, why do we need an app like this? Another problem is that most gender uh, stereotypes are fostered within the families. Um, and therefore, the kids um, grow up knowing their role in society, depending on their genders. Um, so for this reason, we need to stop embedding gender stereotypes in children. The goal of this app is to contribute in a positive way to the gender equality movement. Um, with this project, I would like to uh, invite boys to think more critically about those gender uh, stereotypes and issues within the family. Also help them realize that gender equality issues are not only girls' problems, but they also benefit from um, gender stereotype-free societies. The, so the solution I propose uh, would be in the form of an uh, interactive ebook uh, for tablet devices. This ebook will feature animations and a choose your own adventure experience that will help to engage the, boy, uh, the boys into the, the, the stories. Um, the app will allow the reader to create several different versions of the story and, uh, and that's gonna help them realize that they have the options and paths to follow as in the story as in life. If I had enough resources, I would like to uh, develop a play section of the, of the ebook with theme related games as well. So for my, uh, for my research, I was reading a um, handful of um, books and articles and three of them stand up to me. Uh, the first one is in a different voice from Carol Gilligan and one of her statements is that uh, gender Gender self-portraits, either feminine or masculine, 
are very um, based on children's stories or children fa fairy tales. Uh, the second article is why it's imperative to teach empathy to boys. Um, and in this article, um, they're talking how in American societies, the boys are less encouraged to read fairy tales or stories. And that is an issue because um, by reading uh, fairy tales and stories, uh, kids learn empathy and to put themselves in somebody else's position. And by doing so, by not doing so with boys, very, uh, they're not learning a very important skill, which is empathy, which later on in life is, is going to be a, a, of big impact in their lives. In Why Men and Masculinity Matters for Gender Equality, James L. Lang is talking about how, how important it is to change the concept of masculinity as well as um, the expectations of how to be a man. So uh, during my research, as I mentioned before, I found out that uh, most of the gender equality um, resources are focused on women empowerment. So I didn't find many sites that included men as part of their target audience. Uh, nevertheless, I found very, very great resources like Van Bossy or New Moon's Girls or the, um, or the organization He for She, which is one of my um, influences for this project. But my competitors would be um, Seven Wonderlicious, which is a book targeted for small girls, and uh, it's very focused on gender equality. And uh, it's, it's, it's a good book. It has 28 different stories. And um, open the invitation to, to kids to explore and, uh, and analyze gender equality issues. On the, on the downside, um, well, their main target audience are, are girls, and it's not very interactive or engaging. The second one is Gone Wishing. This one is a, an extraordinary um, app. It's very interactive. It, is, um, it has very good illustrations. It has a very good and compelling story, and uh, is very engaging. It also provides a play, a play section of, of the book, but it doesn't have a gender equality focus and the reader cannot uh, explore different outcomes of the story. The third one would be like Jack and the Beanstalk. This is a very great app as well. It's very interactive. It uh, fusions gaming and interactive um, story or reading. This encourages boys to be engaged with the book, and the reader can really explore different, um, different sides of the story as, as it goes. Um, it also includes scoring, and uh, the illustrations and interactivity is very good. The downside, it doesn't have a gender equality issue, uh, I mean, a gender equality focus, and it doesn't have saving options. So once you, you play it and, and go to the end, then you don't have a way to, to review that, that story. But my principal competitor would be uh, Monster Loves You. This is a great app and is very similar to what I want to do because it's a choose your own adventure kind of um, app. Um, it has different format. It comes in different formats like for iPad, Android, and PC. Uh, it has great illustrations. Um, it's an ebook. You can play. Um, the player can make decisions of about the the monsters' lives, and those decisions are going to affect the outcome of that monster. So uh, it also um, has a rewarding system and uh, up to 900 different options to choose from. At the end, uh, the, the player or the user um, will have up to 12 different outcomes for his or her monster. So it's a very good 
app. And on the downside, um, there is not m much interactivity besides the choosing choosing the different options. Um, it's buggy. It doesn't have a gender equality focus. Uh, doesn't have saving options, and it doesn't have a replay option mode either. So th this is a graph of how the powers would compare to those apps, and the powers is better. So um, my, my subject experts would be um, Molly Seeger. She's an extraordinary woman. She's a psychologist, and uh, she works for a home within here in San Francisco. It's a um, nonprofit um, organization that works with foster kids. So he, she is very um, engaged with uh, children development. Uh, she's also a, mo a mother of a seven-year-old girl. And my second um, expert would be Lorena Marquez. She is a Mexican psychologist, and she is a gender equality enthusiast. She has a lot of expertise in the subject, and um, she is also a, mo a mother of four children. So I guess they would be very good experts for me to 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 rely on. Uh, I also would, uh, would I also would need to I also would need to find a, an expert that helps me with with the writing of the story so I can develop a good a good story engaging no so I can develop an engaging story for children. My primary target audience are boys between 6 and 9 year old. Uh, live in the Bay Area, are English speakers, and um, they have access to a tablet, that's very important, as well as uh, they love fantasy tales, and they're very uh, active, and la like sports and video games. My secondary target audience would be their parents, so around 25 to 35 year old, live in the Bay Area, English speakers, they're um, interested in their children's uh, reading habits, and uh, they also have access to a tablet. My, my third target audience would be uh, the female si siblings of the boys. Um, they would be between six and years, uh, they would be six, no. They would be between six and nine year, years old, live in the Bay Area, are also English speakers, and they have access to a tablet. Besides being, uh, besides being fairy tale lovers, he is Max Moore, my primary persona, uh, eight-year-old boy from the Bay Area, with two uh, si siblings, Paula of six, Doreen three years old. Max is smart, active. Uh, Max is a smart and active boy who loves to play soccer. Uh, baseball and video games. Uh, at home, he spends a lot of time playing with her sisters. Um, with Paula, they play soccer, they play throw, and they, use, they even like mimic some wrestling matches. So the powers and adventure of possibilities is the story of two siblings, Edgar and Eliza Powers. Um, with the potential to become the most powerful sorcery union of the land. They threaten the power's future force union but ki by kidnapping one of them. The powers learn that in order to defeat the evil sorcerers, they will have to break the rules of traditional sorcery. Now I'm going to present with three different scenarios of how the story would be unfolded. So. For example, this would be chapter one. Eliza's mom doesn't like Eliza to practice sorcerers only um, spells with her brother because those are for boys. Uh, and she prohibits Eliza from practicing spells of sorcerers only. Eliza agrees to stop practicing with Edgar, at least in public, uh, and tells her mom that she's going to the garden to make potions or something. So instead of, instead of um, just quitting practicing those spells, we are going to ask the users what Eliza should do. 
So uh, the user is going to have basically three different options, like the ones we are presenting here in those cards. So the option number one would be Eliza hides to keep practicing on her own. And uh, the number two would be Edgar keeps teaching Eliza uh, the sorcerer's spell. Or the uh, number three, that is Eliza teaches Edgar some of her spells. So as we see, like the, these three options, the result of the card number one would be that Eliza, since she's uh, practicing by her own, she's not going to learn the spell as fast as she could and as well as she could. She's still going to have the spell in the spell card library, but let's say half of the power. So the second option, uh, Edgar keeps teaching Eliza how to do those, um, those spells. As a result, Eliza masters some of the sorcerer spells quicker and better, and she can add those to her um, spell card li library. Option number three would be the, more, uh, the most proactive of the three, because um, not only Eliza is teaching, is, sorry, not only Eliza is um, learning those spells, but she's also teaching Edgar some of, of her spells. So as a result, both siblings uh, master new spells, and they add them to their spell um, card library. The learning outcome of this activity would be that the user is going to learn that some norms of society linked with gender uh, stereotypes limit the individual. By challenging these norms of society, we can reach better outcomes and achieve more. Regnar and Luisa have a vision that the powers siblings are going to surpass their, uh, Regnar and Luisa's powers. So they decide to keep, uh, kidnap one of them this to separate them and break the future um, union. So here the user is going to have two options. They're going to have to decide which of the siblings is going to get kidnapped. So option number one is going to be Edgar, which is this, the leader, uh, decision maker, and the strongest, or Eliza, which is um, which is a very curious sorceress, extraordinary tal talented, and very agile. The result of uh, choosing option number one would be that Eliza has to save her brother. Therefore, she becomes the hero. Um, as also, Edgar will learn that having learned some of her sister's, uh, having learned some of her sister's spells would help him to lead Eliza to his p uh, position quicker. As a result of option number two, Edgar will have to rescue Eliza. And for that to happen, um, Edgar will have to take some of Eliza's directions, and Eliza is going to become the leader because she is going to guide Edgar to her path. So the learning outcomes of this activity would be that Edgar uh, is going to learn to take direction from Eliza, who is supposed to be the... The reader also is going gonna, is gonna to learn that teaming up boys and girls leads everyone to greater results. As part of the Chapter 2, I'm calling it Chapter 2B, um, assuming that Eliza gets kidnapped, Edgar will have to start a quest to rescue her. He learns some spells for the road during his. Uh, he he learns some spells for the road that during his journey he will use to overcome the evil forces preventing him to find Liza. So the user is gonna decide which of those spells Edgar is gonna learn. Next, I'm gonna present the task flow for task number one which is choose option number three. Eliza starts teaching Edgar some of her spells. The result is going to be that the user is going to earn three power coins. The new outcome is updated in the story, and the next chapter gets unlocked. So first, Max is going to swipe right to go to the next page. 
Following that, he's going to tap on option number three. He's going to read the option number three abstract. Tap on the ro rotation arrow to read the options uh, viewers. Tap on select to choose the option number three. Tap on power coin to collect the power coins that he just earned. Then tap, um, tap on the cross to uh, close the next chapter on lock not notification. And lastly, he's going to see how the new storyline gets updated um, to the new story. Here we have the experience map of how Max is doing in his life and with, uh, within the, the app. And uh, my wireframes. So we have the abstract of the story and uh, navigation buttons as well uh, uh, as a top bar which uh, includes like a menu, uh, the name of the book, chapter, and the number of power coins the user has collected. So here, uh, the user swipes uh, to go to the next page. Here's where the, the user has to select the option. It's clicking number three. Next, he has like an abstract of the option. And, uh, but in this case, he selects rotations. So he has the viewers of the option number three. Next, he selects, he gets the, po the, the coins, taps on the coin to, to get the coins. Now he has unlocked the chapter number two and the new, new storyline gets updated and he is ready to, to read. For my final apps art, I would like to have something that emulates some of these um, illustrations. Very high contrast between uh, darks and lights. Here's um, how, here's a little bit of the process for picking up the logo, which probably is gonna have to change in the future, but for now, the, the, the option on the top right corner is the one we have the powers and adventure of possibilities. Also, the, type, the typography I'm using is Roboto. Um, for the body, uh, body copy, I use Roboto Slab Regular. So my deliverable list at the end of, of so my deliverable, so my deliverable, deliverable? Okay, so my deliverable list would be, um, the Powers and Adventure of Possibilities original story, a total of six different storylines, three alternative plot options for two chapters, um, the content and visual design for six storylines, the illustrations for those storylines, and the animations and coded prototype. Uh, also, is going to include audio and sound effects, and uh, the coded prototype is is most likely gonna have a sign up, login, select and update story plot, uh, save the new stories in library and the spell card library. The user testing plan would be divided in four different phases. First phase is including a paper prototype, AB testing UI and visual, uh, field research, interviews and surveys by September 2015. Uh, user testing number two, User testing phase number two would be, again, uh, another paper prototype, rapid testing of medium fidelity uh, prototype, A-B testing for UI and visual, probably done by November 2015. The third phase would be a formal testing with high fidelity prototype, document testing, and bug fi fixing. And the fourth phase would, be, uh, would include a final rapid testing um, the phase number four would include a final rapid testing, minor UX fixing, and debugging, probably done by July 2016. My technology plan, um, since I'm planning on developing a tablet app, I probably would, would have to, to have an Android container, which, which would take user action and then um, have the front end 
HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, then it's going to talk to the database through JSON, then connect to, to the database with PHP and MySQL. And then the information would go back to the tablet. So my timeline would be like, um, for the fall semester, I'm planning on taking a GDS class on user experience, uh, the uh, children's book illustration taken as a GDS class, and a game design class for, um, for the spring semester, I'm planning on taking um, GDS class on responsive web, as well as visual design, and uh, I'm planning on taking user experience for the second time to make sure everything is working well. And on the summer of 2016, I'm planning on taking GDS class for a responsive website again, and uh, my final GLA class, professional practices for designers and uh, advertisers. Thanks for listening. My name is Giselle Hinojosa, and this was my midpoint uh, proposal presentation. Mm -hmm.